Our pattern today is called the Brassy. At least that's what we called it back in the day. Uh, there are three important things about this particular pattern that are meaningful to me. Um, number one, this is actually the first fly that I learned how to tie um, and fish with. Second, it's a great fly for beginners because it's very easy to tie. It doesn't take a lot of materials, just two in your thread. And three, it's actually effective. Um, it works very well out on the rivers and streams. So I've got a size 16 scud hook here in my vise and some Vivas um, GSP gel spun on the hook. You can see I've got this hook down in a downward trajectory. That's because we're going to be tying some of the material, the first material, right or deep down around the bend of the hook. And our first material is just going to be brassy size copper wire. I've got my piece of brassy wire here. And I'm going to just secure this to the side of my hook, draw it back so I don't need to cut it off, and then secure it. Moving back down around the bend of the hook to where I want the back end of this fly to begin. Once we get up to the top and tie in our last material, I'll reposition the hook so it's more parallel with the tying surface here. So I'm going to go down fairly deep here and then I'm just going to come back up and we'll just continue securing this material to our hook coming back up to the front. I want to leave some space um, by the eye of the hook here. I've got at least three um, eye lengths in space that I'm leaving there. And from here, I really just want to work a little bit on taper because I don't want to taper this with the copper wire. I want the copper wire strands to seat one right against the other. I don't want to build a, one layer on top of the other in order to get my taper. So if I can build my taper right here and right now, then the tapering will occur with the copper because of the thickness of the thread base that we're laying down. And I don't want it to be overly tapered, just somewhat. So as usual, what we'll do is kind of get to this position. Now we're going to take it a little ways back and then bring it back forward. And then we'll take it even fewer turns back and then back forward. And that's probably about all I want in terms of the taper here. The body is going to be very, very s streamlined here. So I've got my bobbin in the cradle, bobbin cradle here. That just gives me better access to just focus on taking these turns with this copper wire. And I take my time here because I, I want to try to avoid as much as possible any of the black from showing through. So this is kind of wrapped up like a copper john. And once I get beyond the hook point here, this being brassy size is not at high risk of being broken by the hitting the hook point, but I don't want to be careless. So I can go ahead from here and I'm going to use my rotary and just again try to keep those wraps one right in front of the other. If you've tapered your body and made it fairly smooth, then this should go on pretty well. You can already see a little bit of gap forming, so it never hurts to roll backwards. And just make sure that these wraps are in nice and tight. And sometimes you can accomplish that by kind of leaning the wire backwards a little bit. It'll touch the wrap before it and kind of slide off putting it right in the position that we're looking for. I've got a little bit of black showing through, but so far I'm okay with the way that this is turning out.
probably more advanced tires can just start spinning this 100 miles an hour and get this all the way down perfectly but that's not me so I'm gonna take my time and it'll still be a fast and easy pattern to tie You notice me going kind of backwards from time to time. That's really where I'm seeing a larger gap than I would like to have developing. So I just unwind it just a little bit. And as we get up here more towards the front, we have an incredibly steep slope. So some of these last wraps are going to really just kind of slide down that. And most of that's going to be covered up by our final material anyway. I'm going to take it to about right here. We'll take our thread off of our bobbin cradle, tighten it up just a little bit. And take a wrap over the top of that copper wire. I'm going to take a couple of wraps on the other side of it. And then we'll just go ahead and helicopter this off. Our final material is just going to be a couple of hurls from a peacock eye. I've got them right here. I'm going to cut off the tips of these because that's where it's most brittle. And just to prevent that from breaking off when I'm trying to tie it in, I just cut a little bit of the tips off. I don't want to take these turn initial turns to secure this too tight because it'll cut right through the peacock curls. And I'm going to just draw those back so that they're behind the eye. I'll take another few wraps forward to kind of lock them into position. Once again, I've just got my thread in the bobbin cradle. I'm going to take my two peacock curls. I'll kind of spin them in my finger so that they kind of join together, spun up. And that just for me helps keep those peacock curls from separating as I'm taking my wraps. You don't necessarily need to do that, but that just works for me. And I'm just going to use my rotary, and we're going to just take one wrap right in front of the other to create a little bit of a buggy, bulky peacock curl head here. Once we get to about there, we're going to go ahead and remove our thread from the cradle. And we're going to just go ahead and tie those two peacock curl off. Hurl, hurls, I'm not sure. Is it like moose? Geese? I'm not sure. So I've taken a few wraps over the top of that material. I'm going to take a few wraps behind it by the hook eye. And from there, you can cut these off or you can break them off if you've tied them in tight enough. You can break them off. So now we'll just go ahead and whip finish. Taking most of these whip finish wraps more towards the back than towards the eye. Go ahead and release that from our whip finisher and remove our thread. With that we're finished with our brassy. It's more of a nymph pattern. It's going to go along the bottom. Um, I'll tie these much smaller than a 16. Usually I'm going to tie them in an 18 or a 20. 22 if I'm feeling brave, 
um, just because it just leads to frustration out on the water because I'm getting too old and I can't see to get a size 22 on my tippet. So anyway, a really good beginner pattern, an effective pattern. Throw yourself a hook in your vise. Give this one a shot.